Breakfast puppies? Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. In every episode, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will filibuster fondly over facts and feelings of your favorite films, and then get to the glorious gaming goodness, giving Game Masters great gimmicks on generating golden genius. Have Movies Will Game, brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! So I like how this time we just kind of sat down and we're recording. Like, we came in and I'm like, hey, Dusty, hey, NPC, and we just went for it. Like, normally we have all this bullshit in front where we're like, <laughs> what are we going to do next? I don't think we should do that movie. Do you like that movie? I don't have like that movie. Day. Yeah. Well, you know, putting the votes out, it's actually had some listener engagement and it simplifies it. It really does. We can just, hey, what do you think we should listen to? It does help. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to. Yeah. Yeah. Or watch. watch. Whatever. Watch. Listen to the background (laughs) because you've seen it so many times. (laughs) Yeah. I, we just sort of sat down and cut through the bullshit, did a mic check and boom, now we're here. Which is nice. And what movie are we talking about this week, guys? We are talking about aliens. And, and, and who, who? I forgot. Who are you? Who are you guys? I don't remember. <laughs> Fuck. I don't know. I'm sober. I can't even. <laughs> and there's no old granddad tonight. I know. It's it's horrible. Um, Hi, everybody. I'm Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. <laughs> you got that while you were drinking Madeira. <laughs> yes. I'm drinking. Yes, I'm we... drinking a fine broad bent rainwater medium dry Madeira. It's delicious. Since How dry we don't is it? have OGD. Medium. Medium dry? You know, we could have some OGD. We just can't afford it. But we'll talk about that later. Mm-hmm. So tonight we are going to talk about Aliens, the 1986 sci-fi action horror movie written and directed by James Cameron, which is the sequel, everybody knows, but if you don't, to the 1979 film Alien, which is the second, this is the second one in the entire franchise. There's seven of these, right? No. If you count the uh, the prequels, Prometheus and the other one. And then if you also count the AVP, the horrible. I did not count AVP. Yeah. Those two movies. AVP and AVP Requiem, Prometheus. To uh, me, this is four, this is five, aliens. six. Seven. Yeah, there's seven. To me, this is the definitive alien. Oh, I movie. agree. I disagree. Really, to me, it's the first one. Yeah, I, the first one holds on. I like the second I've one. I've seen your but the first one. You, you have some interesting tastes. I like <laughs> horror movies. Yeah, you know, I like really out there, subtle tension, heavy horror movies without jump scares. And Alien, the original, is a masterpiece. Without it, it jump good. scare. Yeah. yeah. Alien jump, has a lot of jump scare. I disagree. It's really? got building tension. Uh, Followed the, the, by silence and then something happens. We call no, that no, no, a no. jump that scare. That is a jump scare. <laughs> it is an older style of scare that could be considered a jump scare. What I don't like are movies now that are like the scarecrow, the boogity man, and it's just teenagers getting jump scared. Like, it i didn't like the jump scares in it me either especially since they could have beaten it down with sticks at any time but i've already talked about this but it still makes me mad (laughs) most horror movies today that make it to the big theater are just jump scare after jump scare after jump scare there's no actual building of tension you can listen i will completely agree with you i will completely 100 percent agree with you on that whereas i feel that the original alien it had its fearful moments and it had those jump scares but it was a masterpiece of the building of tension. It used low sound. It used, uh, it, there was almost no score soundtrack through a, a large yeah. chunk of the movie. It was just I expected one to start as I was watching it earlier today because there was a, a, a tone where it's like, boom. And I was expecting some sort of, of mood music to happen. Yeah. And it was, that was it. You just got a bone. You just got I, a bone. I, I feel it was the precursor to the sound you like so much. <laughs> I don't, Thank you, Hans Zimmer. I, I didn't notice that in this one. And, and, and there was, was there just a, one. Was there, there was one moment where there was a, boom. and it wasn't mechanical because oh, yeah. was it an instrument? So yeah. it was like a, like a heavy like a bassoon or something yeah. or boom. it was, it was yeah. weird because I was expecting something and then nothing happened. Also, can I go ahead and say <laughs> that Bill Paxton had the most quotable lines 
in this movie. I have a shit ton of them written I, down. He oh, did. Bill, Bill Paxton was great in this movie. I just wanted to punch him. Oh, I know. He's he, kind of a bitch, but I like that he pulled himself together. He used the word fuck 20. Well, the word fuck is used 25 times in the film. 18 of them are by him. Oh, fuck yeah. And he also said the word fuck man yeah. a mm-hmm. time uh, uh, 35 times. Back in high school, we had this friend named Phil, but everybody called him Man Man. He Wait, they called him what? Man Man. Why? Because he began and ended every single sentence with the word man. Man, we got to go to the store and get some more smokes, man. Man, what's up with that, man? That was how he taught Man Man. So everybody called him Man Man. That, so, that sounds yeah. like uh, there's a character in Goodfellas, uh, uh, Jimmy Two Time or something like that, because he always said that he was always going to get do things like, I'm going to get the paper, get the paper. It's one of the best little blow away characters in, in the whole movie, but that's a different movie. Speaking of blow away characters in this movie, <laughs> um, everyone gets blown away. Did you notice the captain from Red Dwarf was the captain? There? A pwn? No, no, no. That that's the sergeant. Oh, good Remember? point. Um, yeah. No, no, no. The the captain of the original Red Dwarf. Oh, it's been the, so the fat long. older guy. So long since I've seen the original episode. Oh, it was, it was good. It was good. All I remember were Rimmer, Lister, and Cat. Yeah. The, 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 there's a captain, and he comes back a couple of times whenever they get future or past fucked. Okay. So I got to go. But back he, and he was the captain that. in this, too. Okay. So, question are, did, did, did the two of you watch the special edition version? I watched the one on Plus. That's the special edition. Okay. The awesome. two and a half hours. Yeah. There, yeah. there was stuff that was left out, like uh, the Sentry machine guns. Badass. Yeah. Needed a bigger ammo can. But badass. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of my favorite parts that was put back, you know, that's in the special edition is down the tube and using those those motion detectors and, and motion guns. What's strange is that I remember reading that that was part of the special edition, but I also remember as a kid seeing it that way. So I don't maybe Were your parents hipsters. No, because but that hipsters would have had the special my, edition. My neighbor's older brother was. Okay. Okay. Did yeah. they? Was it just on TV that you? Because this it? is the first time I've seen that. I the, don't. I think it was a VHS or a bootleg or something. It I don't. Must know. have been a bootleg because the, that but, was on a lot of the VHS tapes on the on the bootlegs. Yeah. But they would like if it was late at night, like ten o'clock, and and some channel was watching it or showing it with commercials. They would cut out some of the more gratuitous violence and add in the deleted scenes, like like that one, the the yeah. one, the one with the the machine guns, and then earlier when Newt stumbles, when her parents go into the ship and and her yeah. mom comes None back. None of that was in. The, yeah, that was not. In I the remember theatrical all release. of this from a and kid that should have been kid. in the theatrical release because yeah. it explained a lot more. Yeah. God damn, but I do love models because that stands up. It, it still looks good. What, are we so, talking models like Kathy Ireland or models no, like spaceships? Sets. Spaceships. Okay, gotcha. and, and the cool thing about that is that when Kathy James Ireland. Cameron went to... <laughs> See I dated myself? Yeah, I know. <laughs> when James Cameron went to the, the you know, the powers that be, the upper echelons to show like a, a, uh, a, a what was it, the dailies of it, you know, so not the, really the dailies, but hey, here's some scenes that we've, that we've cobbled together. What do you guys think? They were very, very upset that it seemed that most of the budget was going to these huge sets that had been built and not special effects after they were done screaming at him for like two hours about wasting money he brought in the team and informed that they were they were all miniatures and it was you know really good camera work (laughs) and the whole team was so proud of themselves at that point because they had fooled the higher up thinking that they had spent millions of dollars on huge elaborate sets sets when it was just miniatures but then that's when it should dawn on them you spent millions of dollars on miniatures when you could have built sets. <laughs> <laughs> it probably that that same conversation probably f- uh, followed that one. Yes, I like that everyone smokes in the future. Everyone like everybody does. Everybody smokes. I I do have a question about things like, and they're not future at cigarettes. Point, at at what point in our science fiction movie creation did we get imaginations of what the future might actually look like? Because like, if you look at I, that's that's caveman shit. That's we've always had imaginations what, what, of what the what future do you mean would by look this? like. Okay, I don't. So okay, what that looks like is 1980s tech with a little bit extra. However, oh oh, you mean more okay. modern? Yeah, like when did we decide that we were going to go all out on showing what the future looks like instead of just imagining the future to look like today? Okay. Honestly, there's there's a really good show that James Cameron produces, and it's it's on uh, AMC 
Uh, it's just, it's about science fiction. And they, they actually talk about this with a lot of, he talks about this with a lot of other directors and writers, how prior to Star Wars, everything looked very pretty and, and not used. And, and this is, and it was kind of contained, like, this is what the future, and it's going to be very nice. And then Star Wars came along with, with Lucas and everything looked used. And, and then it kind of went out from there. And a lot of sci-fi has stayed like this. That's, is, that's not what he's saying, though. That's what it sounded like. No. Okay. What I'm saying is, so Star Wars isn't the future. Star Wars is the past. I'm talking about our visions yeah. of the evolution no, no, no. of you're, you're talking human about technology. How they put stuff around the TV, yeah. t- but it's still a TV. But it's it's still not a, a vision TV. screen. Okay. Yeah. It's, okay. it's not a subdermal chip okay. that's I being in front of you. your eyes. All right. There were um, some exceptions to that that I noticed that were spot on. Like, for example, when they're looking at the blueprint of the place and yeah. they're throwing it out, that was like just only a few steps away from being a pinch zoom touch screen. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, on a table that's as big as the table we're sitting at right now. But then they're like, oh, okay, it's... But it took this big construction like joystick (laughs) at the end (laughs) of a box. But I mean, yeah, yeah, I I get what you're saying. I don't know when the cutoff is, but I don't think it's a cutoff as we as a society changed and started looking in that direction. I think it's by the individual what they can visualize. Okay. Okay. Total Recall, what year did that come out? That was 1987. Okay. With the Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Mm-hmm. 1987. I think and it was 87. What year was Aliens? Uh, 1986. Okay. Total Recall showed technology having, like, vastly progressed. Yeah. It showed what the future society might be. It just... It's always interesting seeing what different writers and different directors, uh, especially of times before like the 90s are able to mix with what they can technologically create with modern day special effects but also with their own personal vision of what the future will look like Like, how far in the future was aliens uh that was uh 2149 2169 i think so not being able to just imagine a future 100 years later with extreme uh, Wireless technology. Like, couldn't well, even imagine mm-hmm. wireless technology. There's so much. It's, it, I get it, Dusty. It's, yeah. it's dirty, and it's that comeback after Star Wars, but it is the 80s in space. Yeah. Uh, one thing I did like is when you think about uh, Paul Reiser's business suit and all the business suits in that boardroom. They all had the, the popped collars. Uh-huh. It, it wasn't that. You think the business suit has remained fundamentally unchanged for like 200 years. Yeah. And it was just very subtly changed in the future that the, the top bit was up. And I, I I liked that. That that was a good vision of the future. It wasn't like, say, Fifth Element, where a businessman is shiny and neon and, you know, it was, this is a subtle variation yeah. on something that already works. Well, even the, the Marines' uniform was still... Why are they wearing woodland camo? <laughs> <laughs> on a space station. On a space station, yeah. I'm a tree! No. No, you're not. You're right there. <laughs> On the same token, on the same thing you just said, during her debrief, someone is sitting there doing a crossword puzzle from a newspaper. A newspaper. Like right now, newspapers have become small. Have you, have you seen the Oregonian lately? It's tiny. Yeah, they're tiny. Yeah, yeah, it looks like the Weekly World News. I mean, it's, it's tiny. And most people I see when they have a newspaper, they're reading it on their iPad anyways. Yeah. I, I just, I, I thought it was adorable. Did you ever watch Babylon 5? No. No, I haven't. I've been I've been made fun of because of this. It's a really good show, but Babylon 5 has a similar thing where they're reading a newspaper like 500 years in space and he just pulls a newspaper, but then they do a clever thing where he he's not able to get the next newspaper unless he takes the previous one and puts it in the recycler and the next one is vended out. And right. It's like, okay, that's kind of neat, but why is this a newspaper when you're using tablets everywhere else? Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it was a tactile yeah. thing in the series. Another question is, uh, when they're all in stasis, why the actual fuck is there ordnance everywhere all over this military ship? Like, it's not racked. It's not stowed. It's just missiles laying about in little itty bitty cradles, not strapped down, not nothing. The sergeant wakes up from stasis, hasn't left the pod yet. Puts a cigar. And puts a puts cigar, a cigar, cigar and lights it. <laughs> yeah. He had it with him in stasis. Yep. <laughs> so one of the, the cool things uh, about the stasis pods, at least from a production point of view, 
they were incredibly expensive to just build those pods. They were, at the time, they were like $4,800 per. And even though there was a large amount of, 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 of a budget put towards this movie, the, um, the production team said, no, we're only going to let you do X amount of money for these pods. You have a lot of people, so somehow make it work. So they used a really good camera angles and mirrors to make Double it look that, like they yeah. had 12 of them. Nice. Yeah. How many did they actually have? Six. <laughs> so many nameless soldiers that just die. Yeah. <laughs> you and you said the captain. Are you mm-hmm. talking about the lieutenant? Because no, I at, at the very beginning on the the ship where she's on the space station, on the ship where she's debriefed. Yeah. There's a fat man talking to a skinny man, and they're walking through the halls. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah the fat man's the captain. No, it's oh. not. I don't. I have to go back and watch it yeah. again. Oh no! <laughs> Perish the thought of enjoying a movie a second time. Oh darn! I like. I wish I saw more of Sarge, and I was hoping to see more of him in the director's cut. He died pretty fast, but I love his yeah. face when he's like, when the Hudson's mouthing off at the very beginning. He's like, Hudson, come here, come here. <laughs> <laughs> Look yeah. into my eye. <laughs> yeah. Didn't we have That's- an episode? We talked about a Sarge in a previous episode. Who just said that? that it's, voice. it's possible the yeah. um, the Sarge from Halo is a carbon copy of this one, carbon copy, and he's he's beloved. This is this is a good sergeant. This is an archetypal sergeant. Uh huh. Yeah, he was he was solid. Yeah, but I also like that he wasn't like crazy drill sergeant. He at least had a sense of humor. Yeah, you know, I like that he just, <laughs> like when his people are are you know. Mouthing off, he just uh huh, uh huh, uh-huh. get over here. Oh, <laughs> Idris, Idris Elba, that's who I was talking about from Pacific Rim. That look in his face. Oh, that, when that like, don't talk to me. Yeah, when he's like, come here, say that, say that to my ear. <laughs> Gosh, I only have like three more things, and then it's all just Bill Paxton quotes. <laughs> <laughs> Title sequence, right? Oh, one of my favorites. I like the alien one. One better. of my favorite, really? Yeah, because the alien one. The original Alien had the slow build of the letters out of shapes. Hmm. This one took Didn't only do much a handful of seconds, and then it was just aliens, and it flickers and fades. It's like, it was neat, and it was clear that they were trying to do, there were a number of points where they were doing homages to the first one, but it just wasn't, oh, God. That slow build in the Ridley Scott film of the, of the word alien, so oh, beautiful. Also... I like green better than blue. Eh. Well, the blue color choice was was Cameron wanted to use to kind of present this. Blue was everywhere. I know. That that was the whole thing for the movie was just just an an alien world, and that was the color of everything. And it's interesting because the uniforms that they use and the coloring on the the, the guns, if you look at them during the movie and then you look at them afterwards on display someplace, they look nothing alike because of all the extra blue that was being used. Wow. And one of the interesting things was next door while they were filming the movie, The Who was doing, getting ready for, to go on tour. So they had a whole bunch of laser lights and, and a lighting equipment. So they said, yeah, let's just go ahead and use anything we got. We got to test it anyway. Is so that where that room scanner right came in. from? The what? Room scanner? At the very beginning? Oh, no, 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 no. That, no, was that cool. wasn't from them, no. How long ago do you guys watch these? Oh, I, I watched, watched it, it the other night. Yesterday. What's the other night? Yesterday? Day before? No, not yesterday. Yeah. Monday. Day before that? Okay. Monday. Why? All right. And I've seen it like a dozen it times. It doesn't matter. It has to be fresh in your mind, man. <laughs> you have to have just seen it. Okay, I got another one. <laughs> Bring Because I, I, I thought space, as a kid when I saw this, I was like, space marines. Fuck yeah. Um, And now I can just think, God, what is this Mickey Mouse operation that they're running there? <laughs> Their ammo is strewn all over the deck. Shit's everywhere. They leave their lockers open. I mean, this is a, a spaceship. Granted, it's it's future spaceship where everything, you know, it's kind of... It's, it's a spaceship shaped like a gun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Also stolen in Halo. Yeah. Um, but uh, <laughs> in fact, a lot of this was I was going to say, didn't Halo, didn't Halo yeah. steal a lot from the Alien franchise? Probably. At least those two things. And the Combine? No, that was Half-Life. The, um... I was going to say the uh, the dropship kind of looks like the Halo dropship. Oh, at 100%. Yeah. Um, but um, I just like how the missiles f- come out. That was pretty neat. F- you know, wing but out. But like when they're clearing the rooms at the very beginning before they see the aliens and they send in the guy with the huge gun first. I mean, that oh, Vasquez cool. and Drake. Yeah. Yeah. 
And but it's you can't you, you you cannot do that when cleaning rooms because all someone has to do is just you know knock the muzzle aside. You send in someone with a little a little carbine. Well, the interesting thing on that was they they the in the in and all the side notes about this they did think about that and like if if this were to be a real thing this gun what how would that work and they did think about that so it was set up with on a motion on the gimbal, cam yeah. Set, yeah so that it could not get batted down too far but it could because when Newt ran across that's exactly what they did was bat it down yeah actually up they batted, batted it, it up I was say, they yeah. batted it up but still that is not the thing you want to lead into a room with <laughs> One of the the things that that I always wanted to know about two of the characters on why they were such good friends, and I found this out here recently. The heavy gunners? Yeah, the two gunners, Vasquez and Drake, and I found out just here recently uh, was that with the shooting script, Vasquez and Drake had spent a very tough childhood together in a Hispanic slum, and then they were drafted in the colonial means from juvenile prison. So apparently they both watched their backs in this this co-ed juvenile prison. Oh, just kind of cool. So I would really like to read more about this world. And I know there's comic books and, and stuff and probably even books written. Alan and, Dean uh, Foster did the, the uh, novelization, well, which is a lot different than the movie. It there, would have to be because he also did spell slinger. Or yeah, singer, I know. No, but one of the different kinds of shit he made with the xenomorph was that the tail would um, sting and paralyze people uh -huh. instead of just ripping through them and killing them. That makes sense. I mean, if you're using them as hosts. There are a number of narrative crossovers that have been pointed out between the Alien universe and the Riddick universe as well. Hmm. Uh, people believing them to kind of be in the same uh, loose fiction. If you're into Riddick, yeah, it's something else. You know, I honestly, I liked, uh, I liked it. It was... I mean, Vin Diesel can't act his way out of a paper bag, but that's not what it was about. But it was he doesn't about, need to. It was about no. set design and moodiness, <laughs> and it was it was and graphics, good. yeah, graphics for that time. Yeah. Okay, this closing sequence I want to talk about is another reference to Alien. So, if you've seen Alien, it has that scene where she realizes that she is trapped in a room with the alien that has settled down into the wall, and then. It's silent. Yeah. That whole scene of silence, of that tension of her trying to put herself in a suit, secure herself down, and just blow that alien up. They mirror that when she walks into the room with the eggs at the end and sees the queen. And it just didn't have the same tension to me. Like, I do really? like her face, yeah. though, when the queen is bringing... And when the egg opens and she's yeah. like, oh, you fucking Yeah, idiot. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I thought we had a deal. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Here I thought we were communicating in the only way possible with a flamethrower. Yeah, they, they were talking, you know, yeah. that whole, the, the, in the fact, mother I want to talk about the elevator ride down Um, when she's going to, to go get Newt. Okay. That gear up scene. That is when Sigourney Weaver is showing her range as an actress. That was amazing. The interesting thing about that is she kept hounding James Cameron, apparently, because she is not a fan of guns. She does not like guns, and this is why in the third installment, she doesn't touch a gun. There's no guns in the third movie. And she kept hammering away at, at James Cameron saying, hey, I don't think she would ever have a gun. She wouldn't touch a gun. And James Cameron actually had to take her out to a shooting range and show her how fun guns can yeah. be and he even said in in the commentary that well that's another liberal that bites the dust which i could that's fair was kind of funny. Happen. <laughs> <laughs> but um i would never buy oh wait well, let's not get into that that's no. let's, what or the, let's do it let's get into it one of the no, really no, interesting no. things about that whole <laughs> sequence uh, on the on the in the background tech side for me the things that i really like about movies is that when you hear that announcement that the explosion is going to happen in 15 minutes from the moment that it that the, you hear the computer say fifteen minutes, the time that, the, that everything explodes, it is for the movie. It ex is exactly fifteen minutes. You know what I like about that? Hmm. It, every time that happens, it it never waits. Everything falls apart during the fifteen minutes. It's not that that's supposed to be a, a, a nuclear reactor, right? That, uh, it was that, a hydrogen. Or, yeah, whatever. There was a hydrogen plant. Um, it was a space, space reactor. Space, space yeah. boom. But whatever. 
During a meltdown <laughs> of any kind, <laughs> the machines hum along quietly. There's maybe a gathering hum as things take the load. Pipes aren't falling. Things aren't on fire. Okay, <laughs> to be <laughs> fair, a ship crashed into the building. So there could Barely. be cheap. Oh, it crashed into the building and guns were fired and aliens are nesting in it. Well, they also so, made comment that it was <laughs> the whole place was just going to yeah. overload. So, yeah, I mean, the, the heating system, heating and cooling systems yeah. were going to overload. So, no, yeah, but it, the, the calm voice was counting down to the very end to one minute to reach minimum safe distance. Now, if if you've programmed this, there's a fair expectation that elevators are going to work. Everything's going to be fine, right? Up, it's not going to be on fire. Well, yeah, but it's again, James Cameron explosives. It's it's James Cameron she, is more what it is. And I <laughs> think, at least it's not Michael Bay. I think things were getting worse because uh, she fired several grenades in the bottom. It, it and, wasn't yeah. uh, several. It was a whole like bandolier oh, yeah, of yeah. It was, yeah, that's, that's, that's several to me. <laughs> those, those were contained in the in the the aliens egg sack yeah but in who the knows what else Yoki. was connected at that point well, it was really f- just a buildup of explodey explodey fire explodey yeah. folly explodey but she also threw boom. the bandolier in for the fire uh, to make everything blow I get up what you're saying it yeah she was paid thirty five thousand dollars for the first installment and then a whopping one million dollars for aliens. That's why you do the cheapo weird ones, guys, right there. But she was afraid that she in the in the original script for Alien, she loved how it was it was a, a strong female character, and that it never really pulled away from that, and, and the character didn't die. And she was really worried. She never wanted to do a sequel, apparently, to Alien because she was worried that whoever would do it would just not live up to that character, you know, in writing. And then James Cameron came along and showed her the script and she was just, her job basically, she said, hit the floor. And it it focused on her and then the mother-daughter relationship between her and Newt because in the special edition... Oh, when Newt calls her mommy after she rescues her? Oh. Yes, because in the special edition... Too bad the third one, Newt doesn't make it. (laughs) Because in the special edition that we watched, you know, there is that deleted scene where... Uh, Burke tells her that, you know, hey, your daughter is is dead. You, yeah. you were out floating for 65 years. I think it was 65. And can we say... And then he shows her the grainiest ass triple JPEG <laughs> picture ever. In the future, did they not have good photographs? Apparently not. Sorry, what? They, they had a newspaper. I mean, you think they could have... <laughs> paper was evidently still happening. You could have just yeah. handed her an 8x10 glossy. I mean, Sorry, I interrupted you. No, was that, that was it. That was it. Like I said, I just have a ton of Bill Paxton lines and a couple of comments after this. You know, I love the Alien franchise and still do. I remember the tra- the original, original teasers for Alien 3. They're coming home. And it's like, so you're like, oh, my God, the next Alien movie is going to happen on Earth. And it's going to be aliens on Earth. And then production hell happened on that and resulted yeah. in what we got which i think is a fantastic space survival horror movie but not a good ellen ripley movie no yeah no, i agree that was the uh, that was the prison planet yeah. one yeah i felt that it was horrific it had tension it was just a handful of people with no weapons fighting this thing that can kill any of them at any time how do we kill it? Oh, we ha- the only way we can kill it is actually by killing ourselves. You know, the only it. way aliens and... works is if it's a surprise. Because humans are fucking vicious, man. We may not have claws and thumbs and acid for blood, but we are a vicious fucking species. Yeah, we are. And Our we babies agree. cannot exist indefinitely in space waiting to impregnate Dude, the next thing that It doesn't matter. My, my whole game hook for the second part is based on how evil humans are. Oh, I'm waiting for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. so am I. I'm looking forward to it. So this was... We got uh, thumbs, man! <laughs> <laughs> this was directed by James Cameron, who also did uh, The Terminator. Uh, he kind of got green You led with the big one. I'm proud of you, man. Why, thank uh, you. Fu- no, really, I am proud of you. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I appreciate I'm just that. I'm surprised you got his name right. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> I anyway, you guys. anyway, Terminator. I'm going oh, home. Speaking of speaking of of quotes, I mostly come at night. Mostly. She <laughs> actually hates that quote. She that is one of the things that 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 woman is remembered for. She's only did, she only did one movie, and it was this movie. And then she gave up acting because she did not like it. 
and went on to become a teacher. And she does occasionally get pulled into cons. I just saw something about that on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She gets cold, pulled into cons every once in a while. And that's the thing that most everybody remembers her for is that line of, you know, they mostly come out at night, mostly. And she fucking hates it. Don't know why. It's a good thing. I don't see why. I don't understand that whole hatred of what you did. Here's the thing. I, I don't, if you can work a con circuit and have to shake hands for, you know, $50 autographs for the rest of your life, what in the fuck are you bitching about? Do you well, know what work is? It depends on how it all shakes out. Like. Dude, I'd be the two girls, one cup person if it made that I could <laughs> sit on my ass and sign autographs for the rest of my life. Okay, yes. And in that case, absolutely. And in her case, I don't understand why she hates it. But let's flip that coin and take that same statement and apply it to somebody like Jake, who was the kid in Phantom Menace. He was so ah, lauded and so that's... hated. But mm-hmm. not as a character, as a person. See, I, I, the fans I, I, were so rabid against that's the him. problem. It's yeah. the it's the, the fans with Star Wars are some of the worst. I am a huge fan of Star. I love Star Wars. I will defend Star Wars. I love Star Wars, but, but I don't I consider myself die. a fan. I liked him. I liked the whole story arc. I liked that it was all because <laughs> mommy left. Oh, that made me so happy. But Star the Wars is on fire. Star Wars fans are some of yeah. the worst fan base out there. And, and I Star say Trek. that as a Star Wars fan. Will Wheaton got so much hate. The actor, because of the character that he played. It could have been anyone. That character was going to be in that show. And Will Wheaton played the character and got so much hate for it that he like left everything oh he's been gone on record as saying he had anxiety attack multiple anxiety attacks every day yeah and that one kid from star star wars quit acting forever four story fucking ladder carrying roofing materials i don't want to hear about their fucking anxiety (laughs) my whole point of that is that i can understand in some cases why you would hate certain things like that if it Eh. represented a dark time of your life i just (sighs) Yeah, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole here because, you know, this is a a correct podcast and I can't say some of the things I really feel. But damn, man, life is hard. And if you get to sit on your ass and sign autographs, I don't care what it's for. Speaking of going down a hole. um, So (laughs) go on. (laughs) No, not like that. Oh, I'm just trying to segue into something a little another little nugget that I mind. Um, There are nuggets in those holes. (laughs) <laughs> the, the the girl, you Chicken know, the, the, the scene where she pack. where she slid down the the ventilation shaft into the water. Yeah, she had I got to, a bit on that too. That was beautiful. She had to do that scene over and over and over again because she would just let go because she wanted to slide down. <laughs> oh, I, I believe it. And James Cameron said, "Listen, we have we we actually this is have film, to. Not yeah, digital. it's film. This is this expensive. is film, sweetie. We actually have. We can't keep doing this." If we can get it in one take. I'll let you do it the rest of the day. That's what it was. <laughs> and she did it in the next take. And he was sure to his word. He apparently shut down production for the rest of the day and let her slide down that as Atta many girl. times as she wanted. Right on. <laughs> you go, sister. When, when that alien rises from the water behind her, that that's an iconic movie moment. That is good there monster. There are a couple of things with that. So uh, James Cameron apparently did not want to scare her during the movie. Uh-huh. So he told her, you have to stay looking forward. It doesn't matter if you see anything, any shadows, anything in your peripheral vision. You do not turn around. And she didn't. And that whole turn around bit is just one of the other cameramen yeah. you know, coming up behind her. But what I... Uh, I also liked about the whole filming with her is that Bill Paxton felt so bad about every time that he had to curse in (laughs) front of her that (laughs) every time that like the scene would end, apparently he would stop, turn, get down on his knees and like hug her and apologize. Oh my God, that's so cute. (laughs) Other iconic scenes involved in the aliens, when the queen comes out of the elevator. Mm Mm-hmm. When it's when it opens and it's blackness and then inside, the mouth and then and the, the mouth. mouth comes out. <sighs> oh God! I will so say good. though, I don't think any of these are the single most iconic image from Aliens. I, I have some favorites that I like. The to me, from what I understand, and I think the, the internet might agree based on memes, the most iconic images from Alien, and there's two of them. 
know what the the words are. What's the image? One of them is Sigourney Weaver in the power loader, loaded up, and yep. right when she says that line, that's an iconic image. But the other one, Alien Three, Sigourney Weaver shaved head up against a wall, and the alien is right yeah. in front of and her, her head's and turned. Does that? Yeah, yeah that. And the reason I know everyone hates that movie, but that image is that is a great image yeah. because that, Too that xenomorph at that point knows that she's yeah. carrying an embryo and spoilers. Uh, if they haven't <laughs> watched it, that movie came out in like the early nineties. They haven't. If no one's watched it by now, the whole generation yeah. of drinkers has been born since then. Also, spoilers. <laughs> she's Luke's mother. Oh, <laughs> um, there's there's two of the most quotable lines that have been made into memes ever bring yeah. it i think i know which exactly which ones you're game talking over, about man. <laughs> it, it's it's game over man and nuke and, it from orbit and I, I say we take off and nuke the whole site from orbit is mm-hmm. the only way to be sure i, I like love... that, i like that that's devolved also into nope it from space yeah yeah it's, it's got a, it's got its own acronym <laughs> i love the way that's that little interchange played out too it's like the other guy's like no we can't do this blah blah blah, blah, blah these stupid idiots and the guy's like what'd you just but he didn't say it. Sigourney Weaver or Ripley's just like, you know what you just called him? And he looks over. All right, crew, we're going to gather together and go nuke it for more. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Paul I, Reiser. What a shithead in this movie. This is, this is, he always plays mad? a shithead. Well, mad about you. I'm <laughs> mad about you. <laughs> with Helen Hunt. Okay. Mm-hmm. TV show, not movie though. You said he always plays. You, said you, did, you did not get okay, a caveat. Always plays in mo- in movies. In my opinion, he plays shitheads of some kind. I'll be honest. I only know Paul Reiser from television. Yeah. and this movie. Yeah, like I don't Stranger know anything Things. else. Was he in that? He's in season two. He's the huh. administrator of the facility. Uh, yeah, he's so old. He's oh. so old. But as soon as he opens his mouth, you're yeah. like Paul you know Reiser. Yeah, this can't be happening, man. This can't be happening. <laughs> One of my favorite uh, uh, images, like just like the two of you, is the uh, the knife play. Yeah, in the beginning with with Bishop, I can still do that. I practiced that a lot in junior high. So the interesting thing about that entire scene was everybody that was on set was like, "Yeah, that's a cool idea. Bill Paxton should do that." Yeah, yeah. Bill Paxton didn't know that was going to happen. So Good. the look on his face when they start doing that. <laughs> well, now, granted, it's not it fast. Yeah. It was sped up because if you see, you can see Apone's head go up and down very fast in the background. But um, the reason why uh, the the hand gets uh, put over, uh, Bishop puts his hand over his hand is the the Asimov's three rules because then he can't harm him in case yeah. he in case he messes oh, his up, messes clever. up. And so that, he puts his when hand he says on that. It. That's a straight nod to Asimov when he's yeah. when he's saying. Yes, what, the, what a, the three uh, rules. Yeah. yeah, knowing that bit of behind the scenes information that makes it yet another homage to the original Alien, where the crew, none of the actors knew what was going to happen at the food scene when they all gather together. The only person who knew what was going to happen was the guy who had been impregnated with the alien, John Hurt. John Hurt. Yeah. So everyone else is legitimately freaking out at the stuff that's happening. That's cool. I like that. That's like a that's a very subtle nod that only works if you knew, if you've mined this information. So with Bishop, Lance Henriksen had uh, he had pledged to actually quit acting if this part for him did not work out because he had always played little bit roles, and th- this actually proved to be one of his like most successful films this was one ever. Of- I saw a bit of him after this. This, too. I think, was kind of what put him on the map. Yeah, I think yeah. so. He also wanted to have in the scene where he's looking through the the microscope, taking apart the the face hugger. He he lobbied to have dual pupil eyes because he thought it would be really really creepy. And then they saw the cut of him looking up at the marine that came in and thought that was creepy enough. And Cameron said, "No, no, that's creepy enough. You have a very good presence of creep. Let's not add to it." I did not remember his character being so humble. It was, it was refreshing. I haven't seen this movie in years, but I've watched it a lot. But I remember, I remember his character being cold for some reason, but watching the, watching it last night, he was so like, yes, there's, there's some nerd groups on the internet as you, as you might be aware. Now there's, there's levels of them. And I belong to some of the, the, the deep, dark, nerds on the web um <laughs> one of them is realistic spaceship combat 
and how to how to work on it. And another one is the psychology of of a slave synthetic race. And I thought that their synthetics in this showed a lot of thought. That <clears throat> God, how do I put this? That that the the synthetic was unapologetic about what he was, but put himself second to man while still maintaining his self-awareness where he, he wouldn't ap- apologize for what he was, but he used it in humanity's benefit. I also I like, like that. Yeah. I like that his whole thing. Well, I'll go through the tunnels and do yeah. the thing because the aliens aren't, don't give a shit about this. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. He knows he's, you know, disposable, basically. No, he knows he doesn't register to them. And that like, he doesn't want to die, yeah. too. So he, he, did, did you yeah. guys catch that? That that he has, yeah. he's not just a robot. He has a will to, to self-preservation. There was a, there was a lot of the, the movie that things were not known until, like, the day of shooting. And Lance Hendrickson apparently did not know that the queen was going to rip him apart until they filmed <laughs> that that portion of the scene. So he's off camera with while this dummy is up in the air. That was good Bukaki, by the way. <laughs> getting ripped ripped apart. And apparently it freaked him out because they made they made his his dummy look so much like him that it gave him nightmares for like weeks, apparently. That shouldn't have been necessary though, that whole fucking scene. Why was there no one on the ship? Why? I've that, often yeah, wondered yeah. that as well. I, I mean, was wondering that last That is a very is, large yeah. ship this that, is, that, that is going through space yeah. with a whole bunch of little I, fighter ships I, on I, it. I have, I have a real problem. And I didn't as a kid, like I said earlier. I, I just, I have a real problem with how the military was portrayed in this. Because that's supposed to be space marines. They have core lingo. And this was the most asinine, bass backwards, idiotic way. I mean, this was McHale's Navy. This was bullshit this was down periscope that wouldn't it no 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 so let's let's take that and let's push it a little bit further here science fiction in space well one thing that we've never actually heard in the whole alien saga is how they have gravity on their spaceships so their ships are not built in a way that they do acceleration based gravity their ships are based horizontally. So these people sort are of sort of inertial walking around. But they never talk about why, right? So let's make some assumptions here. Your, the human race has evolved technologically so much that it has mastered the thing that escapes us still today, which is gravity. It has created artificial gravitational fields. Okay. All right. We have artificial gravity. Then why are the fuck are we sending people into space? Because at that point, we have also advanced in so many other ways. If we can control gravity, we don't need to send people. We just send drones. So you could say, hey, why was there nobody on the ship? Well, I guess the ship was automatically piloted. Okay. Why, why was wasn't it, it so big? Why wasn't it? Why exactly. was it so big? And why wasn't it 100% automated? Why were there not? Why wasn't it a drone? Like, None because of that makes they were any doing sense. Aliens versus Predator, not Terminator versus Predator. <laughs> None of, you're just like, what? You can make one leap, but your whole leap fails to take into account everything that would lead up to it. Here's here's the part. I yeah, I mean, I I agree with what you said, but there is no no part of the Navy or the Marines that doesn't involve keeping watch. Somebody is always standing watch. No matter what is going on, someone is watching the lifeboats. Someone's watching the ship. Someone's watching the engines. There's nobody on the fucking I, ship. I can, I can give you an, a reason why you don't see anybody else. Budget constraints. And I want to take this to another subject. You're talking about realistic space combat. What fucking space combat are we talking about here? You won't have guns in space. No, you're going to have mass drivers. All you're going to do is try yeah, to figure out their gravity gun. and send something to just blow right through. You don't need guns. You don't need bullets. You don't need ballistics. For boarding actions, you do. You, or as, as, what was it, James S. A. Corey in, the, in Leviathan Wakes was like, space combat is really nothing but dropping an anvil down a gravity well. And Assuming it's against <laughs> a planet, yes. 
But, yeah, but the whole thing was yeah. them to go in and check on people that they hadn't been returning a signal for X amount of time. Yeah, but as soon as they're like, nuke it from orbit, okay. Now that guy could remotely control a ship from the planet, but they couldn't just remotely tell the ship to drop an anvil on the base and they were call on, it good? On, on they the were there. Base. Okay, that's great. <laughs> they could have just gotten walked out of away. the air and walked away. <laughs> like, and, and you're like, okay, well, that's down to gravity well. Yes, it is. And if you have mastered gravity technology enough to have people walking and maintaining normal human existence on a spaceship that is built like a cruise ship. Okay, this this is not hard science. <laughs> then this yes. is not hard science. You can just this fire an anvil at the other it ship. Be. Fiction. Call it good. I find, I find depleted uranium things. works better than an anvil. This is, yeah. <laughs> But isn't it's isn't that called a tungsten rod? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Why do you need that? It's expensive and it requires careful. It requires. We got a whole handling. bunch of, yeah. of spent rods. We could do that yeah. all day long. We're, We're the, the only same. nation in the world that has nu- has nuclear capability that we don't recycle yeah. our rods. <laughs> One of the things about realistic yeah, space I combat. I kind of thought you were going to do that. <laughs> One of the things about realistic space combat discussions that always gets me is they always have the assumption or that there's artificial gravity on the ship. The Why? only, the only, <laughs> we haven't mastered that yet. <laughs> the only show that that I think has been cl- close to what it would possibly be like in space has been was the the two thousand reboot of Battlestar Galactica. No, nothing close because artificial gravity in space. No, I, no, no, I'm, no. I'm talking about like the the the, the one on one dogfighting in space because they're actually using like air thrusters to maneuver instead of hey, I have this engine that can make me do a U turn. There are so many papers on how unrealistic that yeah. is. Like, watch. Well, I haven't read the them. closest that I've seen is the Expanse, and simply because it the takes Expanse into is account. Good. Basically, space combat yeah. uh, in movies is shown to be like naval combat. You turn, yeah. you fire a badass broadside, or you use your wave motion gun. Um, it's it's just there's another podcast. I know I'm a sci-fi it's, writer. I use some of those tropes. Well, <laughs> the th- well, you haven't read any of the things, so. The thing is, is, is that it's, it wouldn't be like that. It would be hiding. It would be masking where you are. Like they did in, 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 uh, Space, Wrath of Khan. Yeah. Space combat is more like submarine combat Which than it is. Did exactly yeah. in Wrath of Khan. Yeah. They always do it like it's naval ships. They always do like yeah. lines of ships or just lines of ships. But it's, you know what? Space three is three D. dimensional. Yeah. And, and submarine yeah. fighting is the best. That's the closest thing Your we have on our planet. They have up, no idea down, where they are yeah. until what you fired. From way the fuck over there intercepts your course where you were, assuming you didn't move, when they fired. I don't think the military would actually be involved that much in actual space combat. Oh, I think it for would nothing, certain the Navy would be. It would be scientists pressing buttons based I on don't, physics I, calculations. No, I completely disagree with that. Yeah. It's, it's honestly harder to kill humans than that. Even even theoretically, not up close and oh, personal. Oh no, no. I, I, what I'm saying is that there's astrophysics is so many light years of complexity beyond naval physics, and it's we're going to go down a rabbit hole do here it. talking <laughs> about go. space in, in battle. Okay, I was recently rewatching of all things the Phantom Menace, right? And okay. the Phantom Menace, they're like, oh, we've blockaded this planet. No. You fucking haven't blockaded no, this planet. I, I know you exactly where you're going with this. In one tiny little mm-hmm. corner, why doesn't a ship just circle go the all the way out and come back, go or the other way. come come from any any other position I, like I, the poles? I, I, yeah. I think there's an assumption in in Star Wars that they never mention, but and that is is that you can come out of a jump at a certain spot for some reason or another. That's where you come out. Like when you enter hyperspace, there's a limited place. Where you can come out of hyperspace. That's the only way a blockade would work, right? Is if you put ships at the exit. I guess. I because astromechs are supposed to be able to calculate hyperspace jump coordinates from any point in space. Who the fuck knows, man? So, it's Star Wars. Yeah, it's space like, wizards. Uh, God. So well, yeah. If, if you want to go down combat. that rabbit hole, there's this whole thing in in the Star Wars West End Games thing that says that there are very specific pathways that ships have to go and if yeah. they, and, and there is an entry Such point the castle run yes there's an entry point there's an exit point and outside of that you cannot go through hyperspace right <laughs> how could one do I don't a know. distance based I... thing less distance <laughs> I, uh, who knows man 
God damn it, George. But that's, anyway, that's why you leave somebody on the ship. <laughs> you, you leave somebody on the ship. Because <laughs> yeah. you, you want a user, right? You want someone that's outside of outside of pre-programming to fix problems or to deal with unforeseen situations. Yeah. You need a human processing unit. Yeah. Humans. All right. What else we got on this? We're, I got something. We're going Garmin long. and Vasquez's death was really good in the tunnels. Yes. Yeah. That was a great yeah. sacrifice. Yeah. Well, not even that. It was just, you're an asshole, Garmin. And then they clutch hands and they blow up. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I highlight. I one of the, my favorite scenes that I, I liked was where uh, they're in the room. They've they've already you know they've um, welded the door shut. They put everything up against it, and there's that whole conversation of like you're reading the motion detector wrong. No, they're right in here. Yeah. And then Michael Bean goes up. up and sees now what looks like fifty or sixty xenomorphs, but again, trickery of the light. There was only like three up there. Uh, that is probably one of my favorite scenes where he just like fuck and just starts opening fire. It's amazing looking. I loved the aliens climbing through the vents one on one, like yeah. as they were following them. They made it look like the aliens are really scurrying all over the ceiling and the walls. It was cool. I'm glad that not only cigarettes but duct tape has made it to the far future. When she's when she attaches her, her that guns yeah. together, yeah. yeah, yeah, duct tape for all your xenoph- <laughs> xenomorph. They're called yeah. xenomorphs. Xenomorphs. Right? xenomorphs. Yeah. For all your xenomorph slaying needs, and yeah. in the original production of it, the the queen was supposed to have transparent teeth. She did. And then the, all the, all the warriors, they had metallic teeth. Mm-hmm. Um, I never knew that. I never noticed that, that the queen had transparent teeth. Oh, and they had metal all the teeth. vitamins go into the egg. So it, it okay, leaches that, them. Is that how that worked? Okay. I imagine so. Okay. Why not? <laughs> the queen's running was awkward. That was the only well, she's thing that pulled me legged out of it. because she has to keep that giant yeah, egg. But those were some tiny fucking legs. Well, the other the, thing that yeah. bothered me was that very large queen alien getting into a tiny elevator box. Yeah, that didn't Man, quite work. Have you work. ever seen like a raccoon <laughs> like get under something small? Okay, that, I mean, that that crown of hers would is, not have been a able hard to get carapace. Through. Is the problem. You're a hard yeah. therapist. <laughs> Your mom's a hard therapist. <laughs> it's true. Damn. Well, shall we uh shall we move into the game? I think we should. I'm down. Let's All do right. it. Hi everyone. This is your favorite host, Matthew. This week's episode is brought to you by Guardian Games, who we are proud to have as our sponsor. Guardian Games is Portland's largest gaming store. They have almost every game you can think of, be it role playing, board game, card games miniature games, even video games. They also have a ton of gaming-related material and some pretty neat swag. I mean, the D20 fuzzy dice that go in your mirror, that's good stuff. If, you, uh, if you're 21, uh, you can have a drink in the back at the Critical Sip. Booze makes gaming better. Always has, always will. There's free games back there. You'll love it. Uh, they also have a friendly and incredibly knowledgeable staff, and they are the hub of a diverse and friendly gaming community. Um, if you're in Portland, you definitely want to go to Guardian Games. Bringing this to the gaming table, what are these characters that we have in this one, Dusty? All right. Well, we have Sigourney Weaver as Ellen Ripley is reprising her role from the first movie. Kind of good. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go with that. Yeah. Not especially lawful. Yeah. She received a Saturn Award for Best Actress for this performance. What's a Saturn Award? It's just a sci-fi movie award. Never heard of it. Ah. And she was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actress. And it was her first. And it was also the first time in uh, film history where an action lead was a woman that got that nomination. See what happens when you pick up a gun? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and then we have Michael Biehn as Corporal Dwayne Hicks. Who a lot of people get confused he was as, good. as Hudson. Like no, no, no. Was he, like, was, he was the nice one. He yeah. was good. H- that whole line, Hudson, sir, yeah. he's Hicks. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd go with lawful good for him. I'm down. Yeah, that works for me. <laughs> uh, Paul Reiser is Carter J. Burke. Neutral <laughs> evil. Yeah, I'm going to go with that, too. You wouldn't think that he was chaotic? No. Because chaotic implies no rhyme or reason to your actions. 
chaotic implies that you are you don't work within structures. You don't have a plan. You are essentially just yeah. Sorry, I don't I don't have much D and D there, Matthew. <laughs> chaotic evil is is considered the psychopath alignment, and I would not yeah, say that and he I, was a psychopath. I would. He he used the structure. He lied, but he put on a, a good face. He was there for the bottom dollar. A chaotic evil person. Wouldn't good give people a fuck. don't understand evil. Yeah. It's okay. You're good. It's the nut job Joker. The Joker is chaotic yeah. evil. This guy is not the Joker. I would say neutral evil. Yeah. Lance Hendrickson yeah. is Bishop. <laughs> lawful good. Yeah. Or yeah. lawful neutral. Because he doesn't, he doesn't, I, I'm not sure because he could be programmed, in which case alignment doesn't, doesn't fall into it. Because he is, he we is don't, serving. We, yeah, we don't we don't go into enough about what he is and what his yeah lawful neutral. But if if he is self aware and has the ability to make his own choices, then he is lawful good. I I, I think he's self he he is self aware to a point because he he makes that he makes the comment about the twos were always a little twitchy. Yeah. So I think he he's aware that that there are, there are things, but he even says he he can't harm another person. So. Well, that's the three laws of robotics. I, I, I know, I know. It's tough when it comes to a being that may or may not have a soul. A soul. <laughs> Free will. If, if if he does, I'm going to say lawful good. Okay. Otherwise, definitely a lawful alignment. Yeah. I'm down. Didn't have to save the kid at the end. Well, I guess he did. Depending on the the laws of humanity, <laughs> and then we have Carrie Hen as who played Newt. Uh, actual name was Rebecca Jordan, but went by Newt. Um, kid, good, yeah, kid, kid class, scared. She was essential. She she was barely a character. She was more of a MacGuffin. Yeah, she she yeah. was a reason to move things along. Yeah, she was a plot hook. Bill Paxton as technician Private Hudson. <laughs> I'm going to say lawful good again, but just kind of, kind of, kind of a little bit of a bitch. Doesn't process well under pressure. Well, he made several comments like, how do I get out of this chicken shit outfit? So. Yeah, that's, that's not necessarily not lawful. I mean, <laughs> no. no, he's just a little whiny little bitch. Yeah, he's, he's, most people in the military will have lawful in them. You, you have to, to be able to take those kind of orders. I would say either lawful good or chaotic good. Either one. Yeah. It's hard to tell. He definitely had an itchy trigger figure. <laughs> God, you know what? I, I should have covered this in the movies, but do you notice how often they shot the wall when they're sweeping back and forth <laughs> like this? Like they'll be at the far end of their arc where the wall is right next yeah, to the end of mm-hmm, their gun. Yeah. And that's where the light comes. That's where. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I was yeah. also thinking that those sentry guns were not well placed. No, no. I think we all have grown up playing games. I think we could have found a better place to put those sentry guns. Yeah. 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 Plus one bonus if you're flanking. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, then we have William Hope as Officer Lieutenant Gorman. Uh, d- um, I'm going to go uh, lawful good again. I was yeah. going to say in, he's in NPC. Effectual. He was, I was ineffectual. I was going to say NPC. Yeah. Oh, no. He's definitely a player really? character. Yeah. He just rolled a one, got yeah. hit on the head. <laughs> uh, then we have Jeanette Goldstein uh, playing the smart gunner, Private Vasquez. Chaotic good. Yeah, I'll go with chaotic on this yeah. one, especially because of her early background that you talked about earlier. Uh, and I'll apply the same to her friend. The, the, the for Drake, lack of a better yeah. word. Drake, yeah. Um, now, interesting with, with her as an actress, when that movie came out, there were a lot of, of women, a lot of Hispanic women that would come up to her and start speaking to her in Spanish, apparently. She's commented about this in many, many interviews. She doesn't speak it, does she? She is nowhere near being Hispanic. I, I know, I know darkened, Spanish speakers, they, and she had a hell of a time saying it. They darkened her skin. They darkened her hair and put dark contacts in her to have a Hispanic flair. But she's okay. not? She is not. She is as, as, uh. as white as you can get. In fact, uh, her she is in Titanic. She is the Irish mom in Titanic that dies with her children, that tells them to go to sleep and that everything will be okay. Dude, don't. I, I see you twitching <laughs> over there, but here's the thing. An actor has to be able to portray anything. I agree. And race is a part I of agree. that. Don't get all twitchy about it. And, it, 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 and, and, not, and this isn't a That's defending it. It's just said <laughs> that they didn't hire a Hispanic actress to play the role. Grumble, grumble, grumble. I okay. don't know their reasoning behind it. I'm just saying that they used her. 
Okay, moving on. And then Al Matthews as Sergeant A. Pone. <laughs> now, <laughs> lawful before, good, lawful good, yeah, definitely and fucking great. Yeah. Now, w- he uh, he attributed his casting to his military experience for this movie. He he played the sergeant in the film, and in, was also in real life was the first black Marine to be promoted to the rank of sergeant in the field during service in Vietnam. Nice. Yeah, so he he actually did bring some gravitas to that part. So I think, yeah, I think he had that, was he had that voice of command. I think that was just him playing. You have himself. to have. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. What you got for us, Matthew? Yeah. Bug hunt. Aptly this name is, is a bug hunt. I I spoke earlier about um how humanity does not have claws and fangs, and we only have thumbs, and yet we are. Fucking evil and remorseless when we go to war. Um, so, on one hand, you have humanity. We have thumbs. We make tools. On the other hand, you have this race of xenomorphs, which apparently excretes its starships because they look very biologic, right? Like they're, they're an organic based culture. Well, that starship wasn't a xenomorph starship, wasn't it? No. no. Why was it all organic in the exact same way that everything else was organic? Because they secreted all their shit all over it. Have you oh. seen Prometheus? No. Ah, Prometheus goes in the background. But Ooh, if you watch, me. if you Real watch, fast. have you watched Alien? Yes. The beginning of Alien, they're they're walking through the starship, and you see the dead pilot of the ship with the with the the hole in his chest. With the hole in his chest. Oh yeah. So and then in Prometheus, you meet. Are they are they yeah, space essentially? Yes. Okay, how do they get about what the al- wait the, the xenomorphs? Yeah. Oh no, 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 the xenomorphs are not are not spacefaring. The xenomorphs are effectively then how did they created in space. They are effectively created in Prometheus. As All a right, I have to watch this anyway. This it's, it's not a, a good. It's, movie. it's a horrible movie. I don't care. I'll, I'll just pretty. watch it as okay. more. Yeah, yeah, it know? is pretty. pretty. And then yeah. go ahead and watch the, the the next one. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, bug hunt. <laughs> xenomorphs are tough with acid for blood, super strength, dagger tails. Resistant to vacuum, they are truly the stuff of nightmares. Humanity, with its weak claws, sissy fangs, is way worse. We've got thumbs, and we hate like no other. So in the first three movies, they all have similar themes. Escape, defend, survive. Fuck that. We're not going to do that. That's that's not our gig. That's not what humanity does. When we see a threat, when a tiger comes to a village, what do we all do? We grab our sticks and we beat the crap out of it. That's what the fuck we do. And we tell its friends. And then we take its head and we put it on a pole so that all the other tigers know to stay the fuck out of our village. If you think about it, human history, a a, a tiger (laughs) is, is, is pretty much a monster, right? Some of the... Some of my favorite one shots of any role playing games that I've ever run at conventions are you or a group of zero level characters and a wolf is eating your crops. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah, I mean, all right, we all go to fight. Shit. We all go fight the wolf. All right, in the fight, all of you, you die are. except for one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it, it comes down to I, I got this feeling when I was watching it that everything humanity was choosing was wrong, but it was only because they were surprised. Now, this time, discounting Alien Three because I don't take that into account when I'm writing this thing. Yeah, it's it's a weird one. The, the, this time, humanity knows what's going on. There's like, there's aliens out there. They're big. They're badass. So what would humanity do? <laughs> uh, uh, go out, yeah. steal everything they can, and then kill everything. Yeah. we <laughs> They breed in us so that even the people who are like, well, all we need to do is, is talk to them, and I'm sure we can find some recognizable goals that we can both achieve together, and we can both live out. And, no, 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 no. They breed inside us and come bursting out of our chests. We're going to kill them as a species. So, reports reach the Earth. The space marines are mobilized. Gone are the, what is that mentality? We know that there are horrific spaceship building aliens, or maybe just taking over. Not building. (laughs) Uh, And humanity aims to put them down. Now, the PCs are a newly formed unit of the space marines, recently formed. Their mission is to, quote, End the xenomorph threat and ensure the galactic supremacy of humankind. Hoorah! America. The PCs are sent to CL-117, a small planetoid, where a suspected alien artifact is gathering raw material. The artifact is a whole alien ship containing a hive within, uh, with a queen. It turns out that the, xenoph- uh, the xenomorph's ship is unarmed 
and quite easy for the uh, marine cruiser to explode. Of course, xenomorphs can survive vacuums, so the planetoid itself must be cleared. Sounds good. Flipping a page. And they survive vacuums? The queen did. Did she? Yeah, she was no. in the landing gear. But That's not sealed, man. Oh, okay. Like, she's spinning in space till she starves to death. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where you, you just take it with a, with a grain that she's dead. Like... Landing gate. No, I, I, I agree never with you. Pressurized. I agree with you. Yeah. I completely. I just one of those things where like, hey, we're gonna go, we're gonna hand wave this. Um, CL one one seven is a nickel iron asteroid uh, planetoid. It's been heavily mined. The xenomorphs use use acid to mine rather than tools. They can excrete various fluids. So what you have is a circle, potato shaped bit of metal, which has been honeycombed with. Uh, with alien spit, so it's full of these smooth tunnels. The Marines must engage and clear the asteroid. Their cruiser, while powerful, can't just destroy the asteroid because it's nickel iron. Even a nuke's just going to send it spinning. I mean, it's, it's dense. You, you can nail it all day, and it's just going to glow. It'll be fine. So the PCs have to clear this asteroid, and that's the game. That, that, that would be their level one game, their newly formed unit. But you could take it much further if you wanted to. You could take it to the eventual extinction of the xenomorphs or the extinction of humanity, which I think would be a lot of fun. That, that would be, I, I, that would be like, a good weekend game, like a couple weekends. I, I like a tactical game where you move as a unit as opposed to, well, the wizard's going to go off and study for two months and everyone else do whatever you want in town. I, I like a game where everyone's playing off of everyone else at all times. And I think this would be a good setting to do that in. Just going upon what you have suggested, sci-fi military is ridiculously popular in role-playing games and yeah. video games. I recommend Halo, the role-playing game, for this one. What you, <laughs> what you <laughs> is, have is there? Yes. What oh, you wow. have described, however, is also very similar to another movie, Starship Troopers. Yes. Yeah. The Marines versus Bugs things. And Kill them all! There's a game I did not bring. It's really only like a one-shot game. It's called 316 Carnage Among the Stars. It's a cool game uh, where you fight waves upon waves as space marines. But I would not do that for aliens. I would because you want more small unit kind of tactics to to simulate what they were doing in the well, movie. You you could right? do like a yeah. Personally, for my hook though, I could also see this being played as uh, like the Star Trek games where it's ship combat. Yeah, something you definitely want, regardless of the system. If you're going to do a military style game, is you're going to need to set up a chain of command. You're going to need to game with a group where there's a leader. You you want to establish a group structure. That includes one player being in charge. So you're going to have one player playing Lieutenant Gorman or whatever. Hopefully better. See, it, yeah. And in, and in my experience, that that does not go well. I've only had good experiences. Yeah, me too. That. Yeah. Okay. Especially when the whole group is on board. They're like, e even yeah, in like yeah, basic we're a unit. D&D. Yeah. It's whoever has the, the, is the smartest and the wisest yeah. is the leader. So having somebody play the group leader who can give the orders and then having somebody play the sergeant who, bel who belays your relays the order. So then you have the rest are grunts and you may have some corporals and some privates. Military games can be fun. It's not only rank though. I'd see this as specialties. You know, you're the flamethrower guy, you're Intel, you are the scout, you're heavy weapons. And then you have grunt, grunt, grunt. Yeah. That's how I do yeah, it. Yeah. I would like that. Yeah. That would be great. So with something like that, um, and we kind of did this with the Savage Worlds yeah, thing. Which, I, and I liked it. Yeah. Where you, you ran a really good game with that. Where, Characters could attain ranks and be in charge of other characters, and then you could build units based off of that. So, Savage Worlds is something that is built for that kind of fast action. Like, it's a tactical, it is a role playing game that has a tactical combat engine that's fast, furious, and fun, which is their tagline. I, I, I have the Savage Worlds. I can see. Science fiction companion here. I've wanted to pick that up just. Uh, not for a gaming thing, but just for more looking through it on 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 my on writing. You know, it's funny how it's good. Have, oh, you should also check out GURPS Space. GURPS Space. Can okay. I, no, Can GURPS? I talk about the redhead on the cover for a second? Real yeah, quick. I know, right? GURPS has 
say whatever the fuck you want about their system. GURPS Game Supplements, their, their source books are seen as some of the top quality books for inspiration, for uh, source material, for campaign settings. I've heard that too. Dusty, if you want some inspiration for space, you want to get GURPS space. All right. I will do that. It, it has some game stuff, but it's largely just like it talks about the realities of what space is like oh, and living in space nice. and all that kind of stuff. Okay. I, awesome. I think I think there's like three group space books. Okay. If you I'll want to look them up tonight, that's what you go for. Okay. You looked like you were going to ask me something. I was also going to recommend Next Step the Stars, which is uh, something about realistic uh, space exploration. Is it a Fantastic. game or is it no, a No, no, no. It's, it's just a novel. Yeah. Okay. Next Step, The Stars? Yeah. Okay. I can just bring it next time. But yeah, Savage Worlds Companion here, It's they have a number of the <clears> different <throat> they have theme mechs. companions. And the Savage Worlds Science Fiction Companion has mechs, it has spaceships, it has power armor, different alien races, if that's kind of what you want to go into, different monsters. Basically, if you want to take your Savage Worlds game, which is a $10 core book buy-in, a ridiculously cheap and easy to play game. You know, the more I hear and the more I, I touch, physically hold in my hand Savage Worlds, the, the more I'm convinced that this is a very superior role playing system. It's a fantastic game. And I've only played it the, the once with, yeah, with the y'all. Lost episode. Yeah, the lo- <laughs> Do we still have that? We do. <laughs> you know, guys. One day. If One we day. ever get more fan base that actually cares about what we're doing. You beg us, and we'll put out this ridiculously naive piece of garbage, which I thought we did a really good job in. <laughs> but I, there was technical difficulties and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, maybe. We'll put it out as us. Yeah, that, that was my character. Yeah, yeah. You were the yet the space yeti in our uh, uh, Alien Legion game, which is space marines. <laughs> this is generic, though, and we said we weren't going to do that. But, yeah, I know. I just always kind of bring it in because... Because it works. And Savage Worlds has a huge fan base. Mm-hmm. And if somebody wants to pick up something generic... I was against it at yeah. the very beginning when we started this project, the three but, of us. Yeah. And, but I, now I got to say, having held a number of Savage Worlds books in my hand mm-hmm. and even played a couple times, it, it's it's really good. High production it value is. at a low price. I mean, it's it's yeah. no riffs, but it's pretty no, good. Well, God, perish the thought, my friend. Perish the thought. <laughs> We are, after all, a Palladium printout. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, Dusty, I brought you something. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, you here, did. Here are the alignments again. <laughs> <laughs> you notice I chose not to do Palladium alignments. I did, and time. I'm proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so Savage Worlds will do it. What Savage Worlds is next. And the next game I'm going to bring up is the one that was kickstarted a few years ago, and they recently kickstarted a supplement to it, which is a game called shadows over soul it is near future space age it it mainly focuses on being within the solar system level of space travel it's heavily inspired by the expanse by leviathan wakes and caliban's war and so on it uses playing cards instead of dice it's one of the main mechanics but it essentially uses playing cards as if they were dice what I like about Shadows of Her Soul is that it's a, a heavy narrative game. I would not use it. Oh, that's it beautiful. Necessarily. Oh, wow. That that looks like, almost, that's like Dead work. Space. Yes. It is heavily inspired by Dead Space, by the Event Horizon. It is near future solar system sci-fi horror. Okay. It's, it's a gorgeous book, too. I, yeah, I know you yeah. say that a lot, but when you hold this one in your hand, it's got... Shadows Over Soul yeah. is, to yeah. date, my right. most recommended game on Reddit because someone's like, how do I play a game? What, what game would you use for this? It's like it's Shadows Techno Over Soul. Riddler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will admit, some of the some of the books, uh, gaming books and just gaming supplements and games that I have seen on Kickstarter have been such good quality. Like they, I mean, they... They Printing make, has gotten easier too. I, oh, I think that's that's so, helped so much. They, they, they make like the big box stores and their their gaming supplies. They they give a run for the money. This was done through print on demand via drive through RPG, and they're owned by one bookshelf. Or mm-hmm. they RPG now drive through RPG. They used to be separate things, and then they got brought under the same company. They do the same thing. They have the same integrated systems. You can set up a shopping cart. You can start shopping on RPG now. Switch over to drive through and it carries your shopping cart over because it's the same thing. They 
I use them. I use Drive Through RPG for my books because mm -hmm. I can click and ship a book to a customer, and I don't have to actually sit on any books of my own. That's nice. And they print it on demand. It generally takes about two to three weeks because they print it and then ship it to order. But it is so much cheaper than holding your own product. And that's what, you know, I don't have a gaming book coming out, but that's what I've been really toying with that idea with the next book that I put out is so, cause I do not want to sit on books and wait for them to yeah. get sold. So, so there, there are a lot of other companies. You're missing the main point. Both of you. What? Well, checks. You want to see my book? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll sign no, it for you. You know, have a, <laughs> Buy yourself 50 copies there you and go. Yeah, okay. keep them to distribute. But for your customers who order it online, just click and ship. And I'm an goes, author. Yeah. <laughs> hey, speaking of which, have you seen my, my business like, cards? So, so I know. Hey! <laughs> nice. Anyway, what else we got? Next game I have on my list. And now we're moving into the games that I might actually run for this if I were going to run. First, I'm going to talk about one called Alternity. Alternity. Eternity. I have seen that book in so many used bookstores. I, I buy it every time I see it on sale because I now have owned like six copies of this player's handbook. I've just never known anybody yeah. that's ever wanted to play it. Alternity is the last new game that TSR made before they went under. This was a game. Oh, old TSR? This was a game published in 1998. It is no longer in print, but you can find used copies everywhere. I see it at Goodwill, like all the time, like $3.99. Alternity is TSR's science fiction role playing game, and it incorporates many aspects of what you might consider hard science fiction, but they're customizable. You can. <sighs> You can adapt your campaign to fit any progress level. You can even play it as a fantasy game because it goes all the way back to the Stone Age, to the, yeah, the Stone Age. But it's got different ways of building gravitational systems. It's got different ways of FTL travel. It's got different, you know, you build your own universe when you play Alternity. And I've used Alternity to run an Aliens game because Alternity had the license... Or Starcraft, Starcraft <laughs> the role playing game, oh, which was published many, many in a so small it's boxed like set in the nineties. You guys what, can't what see this, was, but it's it's about the size and thickness of a watchtower. It doesn't even no, have a date yeah, on it. It's like it. it's it's more like a playbill. It's a pamphlet. Yeah. yeah. This yeah, it came in a box set, and I have you're adorable. I lost the box a long time ago, but. It's, I play the shit out of StarCraft. The specialist, up to about the alien, eight the years lieutenant, ago. the private, Zergling. the weird alien, Berg. the captain, and the other weird alien, and the other. Anyway, they got a bunch of pre-gen characters for the uh, StarCraft game. But oh, fun. It's Eternity. It's based on StarCraft, which is based on the aliens. I mean, come oh, on. Oh, StarCraft is is a great <laughs> video game too. If I got some people who were feeling particularly what year is this 2000 this is published in the year 2000 if i were feeling if i had a group that was feeling particularly masochistic i would run <laughs> alternative <laughs> and the reason i say that is alternative is me Hard. it's a crunchy game mm. it is a skill-based role-playing game with classes that is kind of considered by some to be the uh, the prototype for what D20 became. Many of okay. the systems that were used in Alternity transferred over after Watsi got the license. I got to tell you, I really, I really like what D20 is. It just, I, I, I'd like it a bit more streamlined. Alternity is not that. No, no, no. I'm <laughs> it just, is I'm just saying that as a system, D20 is. It's, it, I like it a lot. And something else Alternity does that a lot of people don't like is that all of its mechanics roll low. You want to roll as low as possible, and you have My to subtract. My luck is geared in the other direction. Yeah. You have to subtract. That's madness. Madness. Yeah. No. madness no. I actually really enjoy the mechanic because I've run it enough that it flows for me, and it has escalating levels of success built right into the die roll. But you have to subtract, and you roll variable dice. So mm. anyway, Alternity also has a fantastic setting called Star Drive, 
which is kind of a kitchen sink space opera that has xenomorphic aliens in it. So well if you don't want okay. to do okay. StarCraft, but you have Star Drive, it's the default setting for Alternity. I want to see the one below that. Yeah. You, so he has a big stack. Yeah, there, there, there are two. There, we got two more books total. The runner up is Stars Without Number. Stars Without Number is an old school D&D based science fiction epic. By game. D&D, do you mean second edition or 3.5? Holmes or? D&D. You race as class. Your stats go from 3 to 18, and your stat mods go from minus 2 to plus 2. 18 is a plus 2. Oh, yeah, that's a familiar type character sheet. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Stars Without Number is created by uh, the amazing game designer Kevin Crawford. He is well-known in gaming circles for doing Kickstarters that pay off and then some. You know what this would look like, what this would work for, too? Serenity. Absolutely. This Stars hmm. Without Number can work for any number of science fiction games, especially those wagon train to the stars kind of adventures. Yeah. It, that's kind of the default setting. But, oh. <laughs> yeah. Shut <laughs> up. Hey, what do you know? <laughs> hey, There's a, a queen. picture. Yeah. Of the, yeah. Yeah. Right this there, is more slightly different heads. Queen. Yeah. Space it, Marines. <laughs> it has horrific elements to it, and you can straight up play it as a sci fi horror. Examples game. of murder. Yes, it does. <laughs> I that's know awesome. I, I talk about the old school style games frequently. If if that's your thing, Stars Without Numbers definitely what you want to use. I, I think I think the old school stuff has it has know, a, a certain charm place to it in, certain, in our hearts because we yeah. grew up with grinding our teeth on those you know those 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 systems. So I think it's gonna, always going to sit with us. You guys played Hammer Crawl, yeah? Imagine I Hammer liked, Crawl with laser guns. That's I'm down. Aliens. I am so down for that. <laughs> It really is. <laughs> that looks like a good game. I'd play that. Yeah, Stars Without Number. That's This was from the recent Kickstarter where they made a second edition. You know, I got to tell you, folks, when uh, when we, when he's, uh, NPC is giving these these monologues and we're quiet, it's because we're flipping through these magnificent yeah. books that he, uh, oh, dear Lord. Holy shit. He just handed me a Gutenberg Bible. <laughs> That says stars without number on it. I, that is hold the, on, hold on, hold on. That is the universal omnibus. Hang on. It's a heavy That's tome. the book. So that is the universal omnibus. It is a hefty tome that came as a Kickstarter exclusive for people who backed the first book that you're, you're currently holding here for stars without number second edition. Stars Without Number was published a few years back, and in the time since, Kevin published a number of supplements for it, uh, additional books that expanded it, and are useful not just for the setting, but also as resources for any kind of sci-fi gaming. There's a book entirely on trade. There is a book entirely on military warfare in space called, uh, uh, I don't even know, uh, how, Thousand Sons or something. Like that. How much did this monster cost? I don't remember. <laughs> I like this. This looks like a hundred dollar book to me. Yeah. Stars Without Number has uh, Kevin Crawford just really, oh my God, he really blew it out of the water. With That's like a life's product. work. It, it is. This book is a life's work. The Universal Omnibus has these books in uh, Skyward Steel. That's the one on military space. It includes these books, Stars Without Number, Skyward Steel, Darkness Visible, Sons of Gold, Starvation Cheap. That's another one about, mil that's the one about grunt warfare in space. Dead Names, Polychrome, Relics of the Lost, Engines of Babylon, 16 Stars, and Hard Light, and then a bunch of other stuff. So apparently, since we're on this topic, the revised edition <laughs> uh, had over 3,100 backers that had pledged uh, almost $200,000 to bring this to life. Um, Good, because that's a couple of years work right there. Let's <laughs> see here. It looks like if you, yeah, it looks like if you, uh, yeah, oh, here it is. If you were the Galactic Overmind. That was, I was. Yeah. Uh, as Forger of Worlds, yeah. uh, you get a PDF copy of the Stars Without Number PDF Omnibus, and then you also get a print-on-demand hardback copy. That was $175. That seems legit. I spent yeah. a lot of money on this Kickstarter because it was it's, solid. It's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gorgeous. But it is not the game That's that the I would ultimately run. Got? Here, just pull it out from under the, the <laughs> 10 pounds of book there. 
The game that I would run for this is one that I've been holding on to for a while because of my love of a video game franchise called Dead Space. It's an amazing sci-fi horror series, and contrary to what the haters like to think, I think the third game is good, too, so suck it. <laughs> Fucking word, man. <laughs> the third game, to me, is the aliens of this of the trilogy. It's like, all right, I spent two games being scared of these things. Now I'm going to fucking kill them. And I understand it, that. It's about time. I liked it. I'm good. And if you didn't like it, well, me. Suck 16 of them. <laughs> Suck 16 of them. So Cold and Dark is the name of the game by Wicked World Games, written and designed by Misha L. Thomas. Cold and Dark is inspired by, oh, I'll just read the back. Dying is easy, living is hard, and pain is a given. Centuries from now, mankind lives on in the serious galaxy, an enormously vast and dense system of stars. It is a greedy industrial society run by corporations and like the, the Wyland Corporation and the government industrial complex. The onslaught of strip mining has stirred something terrible best left buried and forgotten. The sci-fi universe of cold and dark is a frightening and violent world. In the reaches of space, the protagonists have to face known as well as unknown horrors. Only out there in the big empty, on the verge of disaster, facing the horror, do they flourish and realize their full potential. This is sci-fi. At its darkest. This game is heavily inspired. That didn't by... get a bump, bump, bump. No. <laughs> Seriously, man? Bum, 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 bum. You're missing your cues. <laughs> Main list of inspirations includes. Because he, there wasn't really a pause there. I mean, they just kept going. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Main list of inspirations includes, but is not limited to, Command and Conquer, Dead Space so franchise, so good. Doom 3. Event Horizon. Yes. Serenity and Firefly. Yes. Mass Effect 1 and 2. Awesome. Pandorum. Pitch Black in the Chronicles of Riddick. Resident Evil series and one of my strange, weird, unappreciated favorites, Screamers. Starcraft. You, you like that one? It was fun. It was scary and <laughs> fun. Right. Starship Troopers, the Alien series, and The Thing. This is a game. Nice. About going out into space and killing aliens. Okay. And... But what I I would use it for the entire Alien saga, depending upon which movie. It doesn't matter, including this, the prequels. Oh, the AVP? No, no, no. The the Prometheus and the other one. Yeah, I've okay. used it for Prometheus. There's, definitely, there's some beautiful artwork in beautiful here. Beautiful artwork. If you are familiar with White Wolf, I am. Then you know how mm -hmm. to play this yeah. game. Cool. Oh, okay. Replace awesome. D10s with D8s and go. All right. The character creation system is straight up the White Wolf system. Your stats plus skills, your, you have your aptitudes and your uh, whatever. It is it is essentially the White Wolf system, but reskinned for space horror with a D8 instead of a D10. I'd play it happily. It's easy. It's familiar. It's got a, a really cool system, and it can do, it can do space zombies. It can do space aliens. It can do... Uh, Dead Space kind of stuff. It is kind of your all-encompassing sci-fi horror game. They recently put out, I don't know if it was a second edition or a revised edition published by Modifius, who does a lot of other games, including the uh, Tales from the Loop that we talked about. Uh -huh. Oh, I think they do that. I could be wrong. I'm sorry if I got what? that wrong. What? You're wrong about a game? <laughs> but Cold and Dark is, it's beautiful. It, it is another hefty tome, but it is full of information. Most of it's setting information. I, I it's like got the, all the starships yeah, in it. And, and yeah, and they're all plotted out. That. The, oh, wait till you get to it. the weapon section. It shows each and every gun. Oh, that, I saw that. It was beautiful. Yeah. I liked it. It was great. It's a really cool game. I love the art. I love the setting. I love the mechanics. And it's very evocative of sci-fi horror. It is what I would do for Aliens. Yeah. Or Alien. Or Alien 3. Even alien resurrection. I like I like all the the systems in here. My, all of the planetary systems. Oh yeah, my one complaint. My one complaint about it is just the setting. Too many acronyms. So many acronyms. Yeah. They're all brand new, and I have no idea what any of them mean. So I keep having to reference simulated atmosphere yeah. containment. It's called SAC. Yeah. Yeah. U I uh, U I N S. <laughs> Yeah, I am a meat popsicle. And they're all three-digit <laughs> acronyms. So there's yeah. so many three-digit acronyms in this. I feel, and I guess that they were trying to get across the feeling that the setting was very 
corporate overlord oppressive future. But it's a cool game. Yeah, I'd play this. So would I. So in the end, for me to run it, I guess it would depend on the group because some people want a more evocative storyteller style game. They want more narrative buy-in kind of, um, you know, the kind of stuff that White Wolf was known for. For that, I do cold and dark. Yeah. This is my preference. However, I'm also very fond of old school games. If Stars wanted, without a number? I, Stars without a number? It's so easy to die. <laughs> <laughs> Either one of them could pull it off, but I, I think you made the right choice. Yeah. All right. Anyone got anything else? I don't. So yeah, you like these games? I thought I think this they're is great. The biggest this is, stack. Yeah. This yeah. was this was a really. I mean, this was in depth on games this, on this uh, on this episode. We were in depth on on the movie side of it. But man, you you went you went all out on on the choice of games, and they were <laughs> very nice. This is literally the biggest stack I've yes. ever brought for an episode. Yeah. Because of that, that omnibus. omnibus. <laughs> Fucking hell, guys! I mean, you can't see it, and I understand that, but. Not the most expensive dictionary that you can buy, because that thing's huge, but about half of it. It's about half that it's, thick. It's, it's, it's about the size of, of, of uh, it. <laughs> well, yeah. we got our games. We got our movie. We got some things going on in the background, don't we? Yes, we do. We do. Let's first off talk about what we're going to do next time. Oh, oh, boom. Because you guys decided it. Uh, this yes. time, Pull it was, up. what do we got? We have our votes up. Um, and it's votes over, came right? in. It is done. The, it is over with. Votes, and we'd like hold on. And we'd like to thank you all for actually taking the time to vote. A lot of people voted in this one. It felt really good to to see you guys give a give a shit about what we were going to do next. So yeah, to everyone who voted, thank, thank you, you so goddamn thank much. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was thank awesome you. to see more interaction. It's been awesome to see more going on 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 our Discord. It it's. It's making me smile. I mean, I smile a lot, but like this, because when we started, it was always like, you know, what if, what if, what if, and we have people that interact with us now. It feels like we're getting some traction and that people are starting to like us. And I'm really glad that you guys are taking the time. So So I'm going to go ahead and go through what we have up for the votes. And I'm going to work from the back. And 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 tell the category. Yes, exactly. Tell the category. Uh, The category was Pulpy Adventure for episode 27. Uh, our four working from the least to the most, uh, coming in with zero votes. Zero <laughs> no, we voted for it. We <laughs> expected this the one, hero. though. Yeah, we expected that. I think it's a fun movie, but I didn't vote you for it. You were the only one. <laughs> it's a, it is a fun, it's a fun movie, movie, but... It's got Steve Zahn in it. I love Steve Zahn. Who? Yeah, but he does not play the character that's written in the books. Uh, yeah, I don't care about the books. We're talking about the movie. I know. I know. Uh, this coming in third place is Romancing the Stone with 17% of the vote. That's a, that's a good movie. Yeah. Coming in at second place is Raiders of the Lost Ark with 25% of the vote. Now, I honestly thought the Raiders of the Lost Ark was going to take this one. I really went because when people say pulp, I voted action-y, for it. I'd, I'd, li- I'd like to So did I. On. Um, when people say, you know, pulpy action, this is, this is kind of where that vibe goes. I'm content because I know what is. So yeah, I'm content with the winner though. So well, you know, the internet loves Brendan Fraser <laughs> and at 58% of the vote, Woo-hoo! the mummy wins from 1999. That is awesome. Now we're not talking about that crap with Tom Cruise. Did you see it? Did you Tom find Tom Cruise has a lot to answer for. <laughs> Well, you know, in 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 a little bit of defense to it, um, no. Universal wants to want to do this whole universe like the MCU and and with Star Wars going Based on, on the DC. Mummy? No, 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 no. All the old school monsters of the Mummy, Dracula, because there was a Dracula movie that came out a few years ago, and then there's the Mummy, and then there's going to be uh, a Frankenstein movie, and then there's Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, and they're doing the, the old school monsters. I don't see that working. in this whole universe where they all band together. No, it's because I, I, I just don't think that people will care about it now. That. that that's, that's yeah, they old news. No. Yeah, yeah. I'm so tired of cinematic universes, but that's something yeah. else. And I believe our next voting is is already going to be live by the time this episode airs. And why fact, don't you go ahead and uh, it's uh, high school party films. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We got super bad. We got dazed and confused, and some others. Just go ahead and check it out. Well, we, links will be live mm-hmm. before this episode even goes out, so you already know it's there. Cool. Uh, All right. So anything else time, we got? The mummy. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that other thing. We put out a tip jar. Finally, we have been doing this for a year now. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I'd like to say something. 
feel free to enjoy our, our content for free. Oh, yeah, yeah we, definitely. We, we put yeah. it out there for free. You are under no obligation However, whatsoever. it's really expensive to buy a bottle every game. <laughs> <laughs> and if we could make enough for a bottle of cheap plonk and a pizza, I, I, I would be content. Yeah. I would love to have a pizza and a bottle of cheap plonk. Now, yeah. we're talking Domino's here. I yeah, mean, we're not, just, talking, just for we're not talking like $25 Portland pizza. We're talking yeah, Domino's. Domino's. Yeah, I could totally do that. That three large yeah. three because that would be, for nine bucks. That would be the pizza that podcast bought. We, <gasps> could, yeah. we could avoid the noise and get some dominoes. And we could have the, the Ninja Turtles over to help eat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if we Bass ever get to the cranny. point that we can afford a pizza, we got to invite them over to yes. share it. Yeah. I think they'd love it. Um, but not anyway. one of their weird ass pizzas. No. 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 <laughs> this is just like pepperoni, pineapple, black olive. What? Yes. Fuck you. Yes. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I knew there was something wrong with you. Pineapple. I, I'm a pineapple pizza lover. I'm sorry. We'll have that on one slice and the rest will be actual <laughs> good, solace, honest to God pizza. We've got a tip jar link on our episodes now. Uh, it goes through our web host and it goes right to us. So if you want to kick us a few bucks for booze, it, if you don't, that's fine. You, you don't even have to. But... We didn't want to go through the whole thing of putting out a Patreon. It's right in our episodes. It's in the show notes. It's uh, with our web host. It's a tip jar. So it'll be at the bottom no matter where they... It'll be at the bottom no matter where you're getting Oh, cool. Okay. Throw us a few bucks if you want. If you don't, that's fine. We won't think less of you. We'll still love you. We'll still keep doing this. Like, we won't think as less of you as, like, pineapple pizza less of you. (laughs) We also have feedback links now in our episode show notes that you can send us direct feedback. So if you want to tell Dusty about his pineapple pizza, that would be how you do it. Or you can do it on on the Discord if you happen to be jumped on there. Yeah, and he wants to hear all about your pineapple love or hate. So please... Contact us through the feedback. Bring it. Bring all of it. Leave an iTunes review (laughs) talking about how much you hate pineapple pizza. But then also follow that up with how much you love our show. Have we gotten any new iTunes reviews lately? I don't think we have in a while. So, hey, guys. Yeah. Let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. We really would. One of my buddies in Phoenix, when I was down there last last year, he was like, hey, I love your show, guys. It's great. It's informative. I listen to it when I'm going to work. You guys yeah, are spot on one. with uh, with the gaming and the movies. He's like, I, I sit there and I nod and go, uh-huh, 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 that you're right, you're right, right. I'm like, cool. Leave us leave us a review. Oh, no, fuck that. No, I don't leave reviews <laughs> got, on anything. Uh, and I'm like, Chris, you motherfucker. We did. Leave we got a, a new one. We, got, oh. we have six ratings now. Oh. Uh, from Chris Street, March 8, 2018. Hilarious and informative five stars i love this podcast the banner is fantastic and there have been several moments where i've laughed out loud while listening it's also introduced me to multiple games i've never heard of thanks chris we're glad we like it and not that is Dusty's not chris. yeah not my chris not yeah. not any relation to that to the chris that i was just talking about great uh thanks for leaving us a review chris yeah, we really appreciate, appreciate it. it and with that unless we got anything else we can go ahead and close out no that's it yeah. hey guys thanks for listening we'll be back with uh the mummy. Oh, the mummy. The mummy. The Brendan Fraser mummy. There's got to be like a million action games. <laughs> yeah. Like a million. Oh, yeah. I'll find something. Yeah. I, I, I think I think there's something to be found. Uh, anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, I was Matthew. And I'm Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. And we'll see you all next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're still pretty new to the seed, and we love to get your feedback. If you like what you hear... Please leave us a review on iTunes with your thoughts. Good or bad, they really help us get the word out. If you want to say hello, drop us a line on all of the usual social media sites. You can find the links right there in the show notes. You can also leave us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Have Movies Will Game is a Breakfast Puppies podcast production. And our episodes are distributed under CCBYND 4.0 license. Our opening theme is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, with introductory narration provided by Isaac Scher. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>